buying a car. It's almost as bad as <clears throat> selling one. It's, the, it's like a, a rite of passage. It's like the ending of a movie. It's something that takes a little bit of finesse, if you will. If you're new to buying cars and you just wanna learn some simple mistakes that are typically made, you've come to the right place with me today. We're gonna be talking about some rookie mistakes that you'll probably make when buying a car. Let me talk to you. Sam, your first enchilada of freedom awaits underneath one of those hoods. By the way, if you're looking for real estate suspension, FitmanIndustries.com. I'm Alex from Fitman Industries, Alex.fi on the cool stuff, and at Fitman Industries on Instagram. Go give it a follow, because we want more people. Now, when building a car, there are typically two options, buying from a dealership or buying from a private party. With that being said, most of the rookie mistakes actually apply to both. So we're gonna delve in the boat. It's a bit of like a stuck between a rock and a hard place situation when you're looking at which one you wanna do. So step one, you're gonna go over, get in the closet, put on your big boy pants, because this is gonna be a roller coaster of emotions and a lot of them are not going to be very good. They're gonna suck, to be completely honest. No, I don't think I've ever had just a fantastical experience buying a car. So first we're gonna talk about the issue that's gonna hit home for a lot of us and uh, probably you. We've all been there. There's an older car that you've always dreamt of, whether it's an older Evo, a Termi, what have you, and you just don't have the cash for it. But if you could just get finance for it, it'd be golden. This is where we run into the issue because banks and other financial institutions are looking out for themselves and not you. And they're gonna be looking at the KBB and the value of the car. And the issue is that some since the enthusiast demand is sometimes a much different price point, AKA bro tax, they're not actually gonna give you the full amount of the loan that you need to buy the car. A tip from an ex-loan officer, which is me, go to a credit union because they're usually gonna be more lenient than your big banks. And if you have a healthy relationship with them, they'll often go above the vehicle's value to help you out. Some even use NADA guides versus Kelly Blue Book, which is easier on used vehicles. This actually helps a ton on older cars. Another one of the most important rookie mistakes that a ton of people make is not doing enough research. There's a lot of people out there that think that just is a certain type of car and want a certain type of car for no specific reason whatsoever doesn't matter and that's fine they just like it but you're gonna just end up disappointing yourself because just like any other big purchase it's important to do your research and find some resources that you can help find out what some of the common issues are right like what people like about it what is the aftermarket potential what can you expect in the long run what is some maintenance how does it perform most of these questions can be answered by checking out the good old world wide web but you can also use resources like friends and family that might have experience with those vehicles as well the bottom line is that you don't want to end up in a car that is giving you a hard time or isn't what you expected it to be which happens a lot more often than what a lot of people would think oh don't be like that if i had a rock i'll bust your head it's just disappointing like there's no other way about it like you're gonna get the car it's gonna be great and then something's gonna go wrong and you're gonna be like, wow, I didn't know that this was gonna happen. You're gonna type it into Google. That's gonna be the first thing that pops up and guess who's gonna feel like a dumb ass? Yeah. So pro tip here is to always, and I mean always type in that one sentence that you want to avoid in Google. Find your iPhone because you like to party and you're not 90 years old like I am and type in the year, the make, the model, trim, and then finalize it with that one last word, problems. You're gonna get hit with a novel of issues that the vehicle has, and whether you want to admit it or not, it's good to know. Don't hide from those searches as well, because those are the ones that you're often gonna find the most common and valuable information with the problems of the car. It's better to know what you're looking for and at least accept the fact that you're gonna have the issue, or you can check to see if it's been repaired before you buy it. The internet, it's a marvelous thing. Numero three, do not, and I repeat, do not, uh, only shop at one place for a vehicle, especially when dealing with dealerships. So different people in different dealerships are gonna give you all sorts of different deals, which means you could get the same vehicle for cheaper somewhere else. It all depends on how much the person or dealer has stuck into the car and how much they're willing to drop in price. For example, if you had two people get into the car at the same exact price and then they go to trade them in, two different dealers may offer two different prices, which means their investment into the car is two different amounts, which means one will be able to lower the price a little bit more and still make a profit versus the other. If you you find a car at a dealer that's not willing to drop, you're gonna to wanna to take your business elsewhere or at least threaten that and sometimes it kicks their ass into gear and it works and sometimes it doesn't. I have to do it with my internet company like every, every year I have to turn into an angry man. So pro tip here is to get two purchase agreements from the two competing dealerships. Allow each dealership to see the final offer and it just makes it very cut and dry and it's either gonna be a yes or a no on whether the dealership that is at a higher price point, the one that you may want more, would be willing to drop the price. It's also a great way to get a time commitment from the dealerships that you're purchasing from because purchase agreements aren't necessarily the easiest to draft, especially when you're making as many as you are in the old dealership or stealership, as they say. Our next rookie mistake might actually be pretty surprising because, well, you would think this one's pretty obvious, but I don't know if you've been on the internet, but obvious just seems to 
go right out the window. Take your car through a test drive or even just take it on a test drive in general and drive it like you would want to drive it. You wouldn't buy a house without walking through it, so why would you buy a car without driving it? And a lot of times this is a common mistake for people that are buying something from across the state or country. A car might look perfect on the outside and aesthetically, but once it drives, there could be all sorts of issues that you weren't able to see, whether it be a blown shock, an issue with alignment, a misfire, a boost leak, you name it, that's old things that you'd be able to catch. There are also things that you wouldn't notice, and I mean really wouldn't notice if you don't actually drive the car hard. Now this can be awkward because private sellers and dealers typically don't want you beating the piss out of their car and it makes sense especially if you don't own it yet. But that's why it's always best to get their permission first and it's important to get an idea on how the car is going to react to your driving habits so drive it like you own it. Also make sure that you're driving it conservatively when it's cold but then when it warms up giving it a little bit more so that you can actually feel what the car is going to behave like. But don't crash it because you know that's a problem here. Here's a pro tip. If you don't feel comfortable, let the other person slam through the gears for you while you're in the passenger seat, but let that get enough action so you can actually see the car work, cold start, attempt, and on the road. Along with the actual test drive, it's important to look over thorough, just like basic things like tires, brakes, oil change, all that sort of stuff, because those are all residual costs that come after the fact that actually add up quite a bit. No one wants to end up with a pile of junk, and a lot of sellers do a great job at hiding issues that the car might have. Because honestly, let's be real, they just want to get it out of their hands. Now, this next one is especially true with used cars. So it's always important to get a used vehicle report if possible. There are things like the Carfax and the Carfax. That's that awfully open competitive market there. Usually dealerships will have that readily available, but a lot of private sellers can get one for you as well. The report shows when the vehicle was serviced, what was done, if it had been in any accidents. But keep in mind that more than likely, not everything is gonna be reported because you don't have to report it. There might be a few service issues or things that fell through the cracks, but the receipts that you get at time of purchase are meant to cover the difference. Now, you may buy a car that doesn't have every single oil change receipt, and that's okay, because the car facts paired with the major repair sheets that they're going to keep is what's gonna make the difference on whether the car has been properly serviced or not. If you don't see a novel of, of information in their service report, don't automatically freak out. Take a look at the Carfax or the other history reports that they have. A lot of times older manuals will have that information as well. And you might be rest assured that actually they just didn't need to keep the $70 oil change, but they did keep the $3,000 repair they did at 60,000 miles. Hey, hey, Manny, get your clown cousin and get some hammers and come bang this stuff out, baby. <laughs> now, moving on. When you're looking for a car, it's easy to fall in love with one that might seem perfect. It's the right color. It's that base salt black. It has all the right options, like the sunroof, the manual transmission, the black leather interior. It's perfect price. It's everything that you want. So you stop looking at other cars, because this is the one. This is like, if the deal falls through or there's something wrong, you're gonna cry. And guess what? That happens a lot. Stop looking for other cars the moment you find one that you really like, because if you do, you're probably gonna miss out on other better deals, because guess what? They're cars, homie. There's a lot of them out there. So you just finding the one that you really want, and more than likely there's gonna be others the farther you look out. There's more than likely gonna be a better deal, a better car waiting around the corner, and don't get stuck on one, because you really just don't want to. You're gonna hurt your heart. Now you can actually use different used vehicles as leverage to get the price down on the car that you want to buy. So a pro tip here is to never fall in love until you sign that title. It'll save your heart, trust me. It's too often that people find a car on Craigslist, set up the appointment to check it out, go fall in love, turn it into their wallpaper on their phone, and then realize it's a salvage title with three gears and one and a half seats. It's super, disappointing. Now, when buying a car, it's important to figure out monthly payments and such, but what a lot of people forget about is insurance costs associated with it because God knows that you need insurance because you're probably 18 years old and you're a male and insurance companies judge you. You're gonna have to insure it and it's just an adult thing. So don't be that person running around with no insurance because nobody likes that and it's illegal. But sports cars, some more than others, are going to cost more for insurance because of the type of car that's involved in more accidents and stuff and what young kids buy. That's why WRXs and STIs have higher insurance rates because the demographic for buying these cars tend to crash them quite a bit more than something like a Toyota Corolla. But that's just the nature of it. You kind of have to be okay with people judging you. Buying a car, especially for an enthusiast, is a very important time in your life. It's like a rite of passage. It makes you feel like you're an adult. It's going to be an expression of you and your hobby. You want to be absolutely happy with your purchase. And this this isn't something that should be regretted at all. So do your research, look over the car well, and just be smart. We're sure you'll make a good choice, probably. So I'm Alex from Feminine Industries. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell button so we can keep making awesome videos like this. And if you're looking for wheels, tires, suspension, FitmentIndustries.com. I'm Alex from Feminine Industries. We will see you later. Peace.